everyone, Karen Glasser here and welcome to the show. I welcome guests from all across the globe who entertain us, excite us and wow us and today is no exception. So whether you are here live or on replay, make sure to stay high in the comments. My guest today is Sean Eiferman and the topic of the show is to pivot or not to pivot. That is the question. Sean began playing guitar at an early age of nine, growing up in Bellingham, Washington, before his family relocated to Las Vegas, Nevada, where he currently resides. With 35 years in the music business, he is known as that Vegas guitar guy. He has performed with or opened for Hootie and the Blowfish, Sugar Ray, Bare Naked Lady, Sammy Hagar, Pat Benatar, Todd Runner. I can go on and on just to name a few. He is an inventor, an entrepreneur, or a shantrepreneur, as he likes to call himself. So without further ado, let's welcome Sean to the show. Hey, <laughs> too. <laughs> hi, Karen. Hi, everybody. Show entrepreneur. That was a joke one day, just trying to be like a poet. I told, and you didn't even know it. Right? right. And I posted it or whatever. I put it in my, I changed up. I pivoted and, and put that as a, like it asked for a job title. I love it. I am psychologically unemployable. Uh, yes. I don't do the job thing. I haven't had, yeah. We know about that. I, I don't know what to put in there for a job title. What do you put? Or a entrepreneur. I love I it. Lucky. Yeah. Perfectly. You and I have known each other for a lot of years. I think over 15 years, if it may be even more. Yeah. We met at the House of Blues in Las Vegas. Uh, there you go. I distinctly remember sitting there listening to you play. You were not eating in the restaurant. You were playing. You were the entertainment. And I remember saying to my husband, Michael, I said, oh, my God, this guy is good. And so I did what I always do. I, I got up. I walked over to the stage and I invited you to have some dessert with us. And I think from that point on, we remain friends and we have gone through ups and downs together. Um, you are an amazing guy. If you're just tuning in, we are talking to Sean Eiferman, that Vegas guitar guy. And we're talking about pivoting. Specifically, we're talking about um, dessert being the great connector. <laughs> That's what we're talking about right now. Without <laughs> a, a, an attraction to brownies. Brownies or apple pie or, or all of it, yeah. Whatever, whatever it is. Also, blues was probably bread pudding. Oh, they got great bread pudding. Oh my gosh, we it was so much fun, and and you know that actually becomes part of the story because here we have you who have played all over. You have you have opened for so many stars. You have been your own star. You have CDs. You have albums out, and we now get hit with something the likes of with none of us have ever experienced. Right. Um, and there's that magic word, pivot. And who else for me to go to, but then to you, Sean, because you have pivoted so many times in your life, um, of which I, I think that you're a perfect example to really talk about what pivoting is all about. So tell us a little bit about your story, and then we'll dive in. Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess we should start kind of late, later than uh, I was born in here. <laughs> I'm a Sagittarius, and I love walks in the rain. Um, I... Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I've been a full-time mu working musician. Obviously, no Grammys on the walls. Uh, I'm not a household name, but I but I made a living for, since I was 15 years old, give or take, with a guitar in my hands, or some kind of instrument, or singing, or entertaining, juggling, uh, whatever, all of the above. I'm not actually a juggler, no, but uh, uh, and uh, all and I've been really lucky, very fortunate that all of that has been based for the most part in Vegas, which is the entertainment capital of the world. Right. It just makes it so much easier to be a professional working musician. Um, and and then, as you, I mean, that's really my story leading up to it. I mean, I've got a couple of kids that are now not kids anymore. My son turns 23 in a couple of weeks. My daughter's 25. Uh, I just got married. Congratulations. The love of my life. I couldn't be happier. I'm the luckiest dude ever. Um, I'd have her, she's in the car. She's waiting. <laughs> You didn't right. come in the house already. We won't even go there right now. She's very coachable. I told her I need silence for the show. This is Karen Glasser here. We can't have a bunch of noise going on. So oh she's just God. sitting in the car waiting. Okay. Well, hopefully it's not too hot there because if it's anything like where we are right now, it's it's a little toasty out there. Yeah, I, gave her a, uh, I gave her a Rubik's cube. Okay. Good. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Totally kidding. I, I can't wait to see the, the hate mail. <laughs> One of the things that you. <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, got married uh, March 7th. And as you know, COVID hit like days late, like days. Everything was shut down a couple of days later. Yeah. So the pivot thing for me, uh, which I guess is really the most prevalent, uh, important, relevant story, uh, is that as soon as it hit, uh, I mean, I'm no Bill Gates by any stretch of the imagination. I'm definitely not Gandhi. But uh, I, I, I would say three or four days into everything, into the real quarantine here where we found out everybody in town just lost their bookings. Like there were zero gigs. It was just a red X next to a red X next to a red X on the calendar. Um, I started getting like text messages and calls and, and stuff right. from, from my peers, from my right. local working entertainers, musician guys. And they're like, um, I don't know how I'm going to pay my rent. There's talk of some like, you know, government check coming, maybe like in those first couple of weeks, right. everyone was petrified. Nobody had any answers. And, uh, and you know, it was a great like thing in the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So during the great toilet paper famine of 2020. I'm when, not kidding, guys. He literally went to sing in the bathroom. But there was a reason for that. There's great acoustics in the bathroom. It, but, and the lighting was good. The lighting and the sound was good. But you were doing something that, um, first of all, kudos to you. You didn't just think about yourself. You thought about all these musicians out there that were now without work. And so what did you start doing? Yeah, so there, that was my first pivot was to do what you just said. And I appreciate the way you put it. But again, I, I'm not, you know, Gandhi, like I, I can't save everybody or whatever. I, I just, I realized people were all of a sudden telling me that they don't have any gigs, which means they can't pay their rent, which means they don't know where the next grocery right. store trip is like they were freaking out. And so I just went in the bathroom and started singing songs and let people know that they could contribute, they could donate to a, 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 a fund that I put up on a quick little website. Right. Fancy. And we raised, I can't believe it, but we raised $10,000 in just over five weeks. So we paid out to 30 plus musicians, 300 wow. each. A lot, of, a lot of people, well, we didn't even know. Like I didn't want anybody to think there was any nepotism going on. It. We, we had the one musician that got nominated by me, the first one. Right. He had to nominate the next one and so on and so on. And, and everyone helped each other. And right. uh, But right. again, started with you because you like to say everything is temporary, right? We all, everything, well, let me put you on hold on. Did you have that up there? Hold that, on. that tattoo right there says everything is everything temporary. Everything is temporary. Let that sink in. And how, how, how perfect, because I, I do believe that you are absolutely right. Some things are less temporary than others. Um, but you have pivoted over and over and over again. Let's talk a little bit about the things that you have been involved with. Um, you do something, and you still are involved with this, with something called Shawnee Grams. Yeah. Let's talk about that for a second. That uh, I've been messing around with that forever, and it's just a singing telegram idea forever. Uh, and then all of a sudden, this bathroom thing that we were doing, <laughs> there were a handful of people that did two things, by the way. I, I, I want to hammer home this one thing that happened during that first pivot. And that is if you I believe this, if you help enough people get what they want, you will in turn get everything you want. And out of nowhere, during that first couple of weeks, it was all going in one direction. Right. Uh, which was, I believe, the right direction for the right reason to the right people. And then all of a sudden, people started reaching out to me and, and asking me two questions that were interesting. One can I sponsor your show? Wow. Like crazy. And then all of a sudden I went, well, I'm not going to say no. And I just put a tablet up here, another pivot that said today's show is sponsored by teriyaki madness or, or the Richardson real estate group. Or uh, all of a sudden I, I had like, I felt like Johnny Carson. I had a sponsor. It was pretty cool. And then the second thing that happened during those bathroom shows is that people said, Hey, would you do me a favor? I'll send you 50 bucks if you'll sing happy birthday to my dad. There you go. He's, he's in the hospital, has COVID. Like, like all of a sudden I started getting like maybe two or three a day. Wow. And then Mother's Day hit. And when Mother's Day hit, uh, probably about four or five days before Mother's Day, I posted an example of one of these little singing telegram videos of me just singing happy anniversary or whatever it was. Anyway, I did 300 orders. Almost. That's 
280 something orders just for Mother's Day of, of literally just this, just going, Happy Mother's Day to you, or different, you know what I mean? Uh, but you took, but here's the thing. I mean, <laughs> this would not have happened. Would you agree that you wouldn't have exploded as fast as it did had we not been in a, in a situation as we are still in right now? Oh, no, I was I was doing five shows a week. Right. Steady. Cabo Wabo. We went and visited right. you Cabo Wabo. I mean, you you were busy, busy guy. So before we continue, let's give a definition to pivot. We're talking pivot, but let's talk what that really means. In my world, pivot means that you shift and go in a different direction. That for me is pivoting. You just you just don't sit there and feel sorry for yourself. I mean, you maybe for five minutes and then you you pivot. How would you define pivot? Yeah, boy, I agree with that. Uh, I think my pivoting, I didn't know. You said go in a different direction, your definition. And I, I got to be honest to myself. I took a look at a few things maybe three months into the quarantine and thought that it was going to be a complete shift. Uh -huh. and, and music was not going to be part of my, my pivot at all. I got, a, I got people interested in, in what I do and how I do it. Right. And, and some of those things, like I got a, a, an offer to be involved in an insurance business. Now, I think insurance is a fantastic product. Uh, these, this company focuses on nothing but life insurance. Right. Um, and and uh, police officers, school teachers, and fire people. That uh, fire wow. people is that a thing? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and just, just their pensions. So I wouldn't have to be like, hey, Karen. Want to uh, buy? <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, let me take a look at your policies so that yeah. I can maybe save you eight dollars every two weeks. <laughs> it, it was nice that I didn't have to do that. But boy, talk about like a pivot in the other direction. Completely other direction. And I just couldn't resonate with it. There, right. there was something that didn't feel right. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because I started looking at some of the material to, to test and I failed the first three quizzes. I mean, I haven't taken a test or. <laughs> uh, so maybe that helped push me back over. Right. to. Right playing and you just yeah but there were a handful of other things there was a couple things there was a invention company you guys have, have everyone's heard of invent help um with the little caveman logo right right that was another opportunity that i could have pivoted completely out of music there's a handful of things very flattering that people thought that i was qualified or you know could could benefit their company or whatever right. they're doing um but it wasn't in i i, I don't know if i it's maybe i didn't have the energy to do a complete 180 Oh, or maybe I felt like my crystal ball wasn't completely broken and there was something yeah, right here that I could just kind of go burp, and that pivot was still something that, you know. So let's let's talk about that. You were doing Airbnbs. You had several houses that you had tricked out and you were renting these things out like nobody's business. Yeah. A couple of things happened. Vegas changed their their laws and things. But clearly um, in this pandemic. <laughs> right. So what did you do? You're now you're now renting out RVs. I yeah. mean, really. You have a uh, we have a private motorhome RV fleet. Luckily, the home that we live in, our our, our home home, has uh, a big uh, spot on the side of the house that can fit two full like thirty five foot motorhome RVs or wow. boats meant to be boat storage. Right. And then we have a three car garage and a a whole side thing there. So technically, just between the driveway and the, the storage on the side, we realized we've got enough room for five, maybe six vehicles yeah. aside from our vehicles. And if we rent them out on outdoorsy or RV share, or one of those type yeah. of solutions, they wouldn't all be here at the same time anyways. They'd all be on the road creating residual income. Uh -huh. um, and so we had already started doing that about a year ago. We bought a brand new motorhome. Right. And and we i've been in that world before for years but music you know you end up behind the wheel of a of an right. rv right. uh anyway uh, i knew a few things about a few things and realized that the airbnb like you mentioned for rvs is the market is steadily going up yeah i said look if we buy a brand new one let's go ahead and dictate that we want to use it we want to take as many trips as we physically can for vacations and stuff like that. We, right. we love that. Right. And so we bought the brand new one, put it up on one of those sites. And like within four days, we had thousands of dollars worth of rentals. It's, it's, we, we had to like 
block stuff off. We're like, oh crap, we were supposed to go to Lake Tahoe during right. that week. Right. <laughs> we didn't realize there'd be that big of a demand. And so now that pivot has created a real cool win-win. One, we have a motor, a brand new motorhome, and we can take trips whenever we want. I love it. We haven't paid for anything. We, I, we, already, I we made all of our money back from the down payment and every monthly payment for the payment and maintenance is all paid by rental income. And so now the, the shift, a real pivot happened mentally, right? which is we don't spend a dime on anything that is not a rental asset. I love that. And that is really, that's right. an important message. I mean, for almost all of us that there, are, if you take a look around, there are things that we can do that um, we can repurpose, so to speak. I'm, mm -hmm. I, I call it, I'm repurposing queen of the world. If you can't use it for more than one thing, why bother doing it? That's, yeah. How, that's that's how I believe. Let's talk about your guitar and let's talk about your invention. I said that you're an inventor. You yeah. invented something as a musician. You saw a need. You filled it. And it's called the leaner. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to put you on solo so you can show people what this is for all of the guitar players out there. This is something that you probably need. So uh, I'll do. I just happen to have kind of both here. So here this is an acoustic guitar. <laughs> I, I didn't invent this, but the back of this guitar is flat and there's nothing on it. Um, and, and then this is your traditional guitar stand. Right. And you know, they're kind of clunky and bulky and, and you can't really put, you don't want to put this acoustic guitar anywhere else, but in a stand so that it doesn't slide off of an amp or fall off of a couch or a bar stool. So I, I couldn't understand why none of the guitar manufacturers, not Gibson, not Fender, not Paul Reed Smith, nobody, took an electric guitar. I just happen to have all this sitting around. So here's an electric guitar. And all of this wood right here is just sitting here. Why hasn't anybody built a guitar with a guitar stand built into the guitar? That's because they're not Sean Eiferman. So tell us what uh, you Ready? <laughs> Ta -da. The leaner. There you go. Can you guys all see? So this is the very first prototype ever. There's two little magnets right here and right here that, that do the, can you hear that? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. So when you pick it up to play, the stand just folds right back into the guitar and it is in the guitar. It doesn't, I don't know if you can see that, it's not pulling right. my shirt at all. It's right. flush. And then when I'm done playing, I, I simply pull it back out and put the guitar down. Can and that's. It's fascinating to me because, again, you saw a need, regardless of whether we were in a pandemic, um, you saw a need. It helps musicians. It helped your, It actually helps you yourself. And now it has been created. You now have a guitar, and I know you have some great plans for this, which we're not going to tell anyone until it's up because, you know, just in case somebody else has a leaner and they want to jump in ahead of you, I don't know. The next thing that you have been involved with, uh, you when the when the Raiders built their stadium in Las Vegas, um, and this was several years ago already. They were building, and I can't remember how long it's been. Several years, right? Two or three years, and now it's actually there. But you said, because this is what how you operate. Yeah. Hmm, how can we leverage the um, stadium out there? So, what did you decide to do? This is fascinating, guys. Well, there's, there's actually two things that are Raider based. One is going back just a, a real quick to the RV conversation, because building that fleet is not necessarily just buying a bunch of stuff and renting it. We right. bought a tiny little 13 foot uh, fiberglass trailer that we're mm -hmm. going to turn into a Raiders uh, tailgate. Kind of it's going to be a man cave. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. I'll admit it. It's a man cave. Uh, Karen, the last one that we got, the fifth wheel that we 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 just got in Louisiana has got yellow butterflies everywhere and is very feminine on that side. So we have to, we have to pivot. I get the other side. Is that a she shed? Yes. Yeah. Oh, very much so. <laughs> yeah. I can't say that three times fast, but that's, it is one of those things. Yeah. It was just the first thing is realizing that there's, there's a whole new team here and people are really excited about the Raiders football right. team being here in Vegas. Right. And then out of nowhere, a few months back, I, I got booked randomly to play the 50th birthday party for the president of the Raiders. And I got to meet the president of the team wow. as well as the owner, uh, Mark Davis. And so now uh, you can't see it, but I have a green screen I can pull over here. And I've been doing virtually every Sunday. I, I've been doing uh, I've offered up my services 
as a two things. One is a virtual uh, either tailgate before the game or a virtual halftime show. Because for normal games, there's nothing really on. For the Super Bowl, there's a great halftime show. Right, right. During it's just okay. it's just Chevy commercials all day. Like the, the whole, so that's been pretty cool. So I've got a, a picture of the inside of the Raider, sta- Raider Stadium that I put up behind me, and it looks like I'm in the stadium. It's kind of cool. Wow. And wow. then and then I started. I offered up to the Raiders for all of these VIP uh, season ticket holders, anybody that has a birthday. Uh, you know, the Raiders can't play in that big, beautiful stadium with fans. There's nobody in the, in the stands. So it's kind of weird. So all those people bought those tickets. Uh, so anyway, I've been singing happy birthday. I've been doing singing telegram videos um, wow. for for everything. Actually, I, I, I've been very specific this past week. All I'm focused on, the Raiders thing is ancillary. What right. I'm really focused on are, are car dealerships. This is my biggest pivot personally, musically. Is I want to I want to make a living singing Telegram videos to car dealerships that just sold a car. Wow. Karen, Karen, you just bought a a, a new uh, BMW. I know right. you're a Beamer, right? Uh, uh, still, right? Are you still a Beamer? We 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 have a, a yeah we are we have a country, we, have, we have a Countryman Mini Cooper that's not so mini that's made by BMW so I think that counts. That, it does absolutely hundred percent. So that uh, maternity wards in hospitals, how great would it be if, if new parents a week after they had their baby got a singing telegram, congratulations to you uh, thing instead of, you know, a box of diapers or whatever. I don't know what the hospital sends these days or the OBGYN. Um, and then my biggest, this Seanagram crazy singing telegram thing that I also pivoted into um, uh most of my orders have come from real estate agents. So, would you would you say that you have a strategy behind your pivoting? No. No. It's probably it's funny you ask that. It's kind of a problem. <laughs> uh, I uh, thank goodness I'm 50 years old, and and these muscles have not atrophied at all. Yeah. My, my those creative juices um, don't stop. I'm constantly thinking up crazy stuff constantly wow. and so that creates a really good list of things over here that we can pull from and that list gets bigger on this side and it gets like herding cats and i'm not good at that <laughs> and, and the leaner is the first time where i have been very smart in uh, delegating I finally realized, uh, I think it was Tony Robbins that just said it in a thing I just watched. And he said, you have to hire your weaknesses. That's so true. That's so I have not done that. I've, I've been ter- bad, Sean. <laughs> it's one of the things I've got to get much, much better at. I got to get better at saying no. And I got I have to get better at delegating. I've been a one man guy, right? You met me with an acoustic guitar and a microphone. I did. No band. Nope. Nope. Um, uh, can I swear? We, I don't. I won't swear. Um, you could, except they might knock us off. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna curtail this. Most musicians are dipsticks, <laughs> and so I my, my whole life playing music is surrounded by musicians, and right. most of them just want to smoke pot and and try and make out with the you know hostess at the right. at the venue. It's it's a weird mentality for me. I don't resonate well with it over the years. I'm not a drug guy. I, I don't, you know, I enjoy a glass of wine with a meal and beer with pizza, right. but I'm not really a drinker. So you right. put all that together and and I just keep separating myself from all my, my musical peers. Right. Um, and that becomes a, a, now a voice in my head that says, well, you can't really rely on anybody. And I know that's not accurate, but my you know, luckily the past doesn't equal the future. Right. And so I've, I've been working on that during the quarantine. I've been really realizing that I can't do all of this myself. I've had yep. a couple of moments with Jax, with my wife, during this this pivot into the RV thing, um, where we definitely have different roles. And as soon as it started to overlap a little bit, I got overwhelmed. I had a moment about a week ago where I was like, babe, wait. I have no idea what RV you're talking about. I don't know 
where we're supposed to go to pick it up. And, <laughs> and that's obviously oh, yeah. way, more about me. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so way more about me than her or even the situation. Right. Right. I was just dealing with all this other stuff and all of my, again, herding cats. And God bless her. You need to stay in your lane. Lane. And we talk about that. We did you need to stay in your lane and let other people do what they're good at and you do what you're good at. And yeah. you know, so I mean, I am sure that people who are listening to this, whether you're live or in replay, we're talking to Sean Eiferman about pivoting. And and you you clearly said you don't have a strategy. So what would be um, some advice that you might give our listeners, our viewers? If they find themselves saying, okay, this is not going away anytime soon. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing now. Can you give any guidance, any advice to how they might consider pivoting? Yeah, and, and a lot of this is new to me. So uh, I'm still working on the mindset and the strategies. And uh, I mean, a couple of things have happened where like I've been, I've been waking up at like 6 30, 7 o'clock in the morning. Me, like that's not. That's not That's normal. I've been a night owl. Half my day is over by then. So keep going. <laughs> this I know. That I know. That I know. Um, and so uh, the advice I can give you is be open to those changes, first and foremost. Be open to them. And then the second, like with my insurance thing, the second it doesn't feel right. Right. Yeah, get out. Say Trust. no. Trust Again, your gut. So, so I'll go back to a couple things I've said to answer that question. One is be good at saying no. Mm -hmm. I think it's so easy. Uh, well, this is my whole life right now. Find out. I have two questions for your listeners, for your viewers, that'll help with this. I, I think. What do you want, and how do you get it? Good. If question. you can answer those two questions, I think the pivoting, the quarantine, politics, racial stuff, COVID stuff, any anything that hot, your fitness life nutrition, all that stuff boils down, in my opinion, to just those two things. The first one's the hardest question. What do you want? Right. So what do I want? I want to make this crazy, but it's true. I want to make $10,000 a month singing a happy birthday with that guitar sitting right here. Oh, I want to, I want to do that. I haven't done that yet. I came close to mother's day it was a, was a busy month. Right. Uh, but, uh, I think that paradigm shift in the music industry has created the need to be creative. And I have had, had to put a target on my wall that says, what do I want for my Shauna Graham business? Right. I want to sing enough. Happy birthday. Congratulations on your new car. You just closed on your new house. Here's from the realtor. Send. I want to do that enough times in a day to earn $10,000 a day from home with this right. guitar in front of this laptop. So now the question is, uh, how do you do it? Right. I, and I, I, I'm just now, I've just now put that target out there. So now the, how do you do it? I even started talking with you a little bit in pre-production for today's show. Right. Like, I don't know how to get views. I don't know how to boost numbers. I don't know how to do all of those things. I need to learn how to. And the fun for me is not necessarily answering the first question. It's important. You can't get to the second question without it. Right. When you figure out what you want to do, it's so much fun figuring out how to do it because you sit there and you just spitball all of it. Right. It's like it's Stephen Covey. I love Stephen Covey. And he says, begin with the end in mind. If, that's the, if I can say the one, the one thing that he has taught that he, he's no longer with us, but the one thing that he has taught me is that when you begin with the end in mind, after you figure out what you want, how you, then you decide, okay, well, I know where I'm going, but how am I going to get there? Right. Right. Yeah. So I put your, I put this website back up for those of you who are listening, whether it's live or on replay, you can go to shawneegram.com and actually get him, hire him to sing happy birthday, happy anniversary, happy divorce. I don't know, whatever it is that they need. To do. <laughs> I've done, you'd be surprised how people, yeah, uh, I've done some. So it yeah. just, it's only been a few months, you know, and I've been surprised a few times by. Yeah, I had a sense that you probably had done that. You know, um, you need to go check Sean out at thatvegasguitarguy.com to find out more about Sean. He is there. You can also go to Instagram. And Sean, I think you are frozen, so you may want to refresh your screen. On Instagram, you can find him at Sean Eiferman. He lives over there as well. 
And finally, as um, if you have a guitar and you need a leaner um, to put on your guitar, you can go over to guitarleaner.com. I'm going to put myself on solo because I think we lost Sean. Um, I want to thank you guys uh, for, for joining us today. We know that you have a choice as to where to spend your time. I'm going to put Sean back in. And there he is. See? Technology. Pivot. <laughs> But I, I think you have a connectivity issue over there. I'm just thanking everyone. They, we know that they have a choice as to where they spend their time, and they decided to spend it with us today. We want you to go out, give somebody an awesome day, and we'll see you on the next episode of Karen Glasser Live. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone.